Zone is a homeless encampment just outside downtown Phoenix, Arizona. Located from 7th to 16th Avenue and from Jefferson Street to just south of Jackson Street. Between 700 and 900 people call the zone home. The zone has received immense local and national media coverage especially as the city of Phoenix begins to close it down, block by block. Yet, in these headlines and accounts, I didn't see a focus on the people who actually lived in the zone. They just seemed to be an afterthought. My goal was to go on the ground and bring the spotlight to the voices of those living in the zone. To survive, residents of the zone rely on themselves, the community, and organizations in the region. One such organization is Andre House, a ministry to the homeless and poor populations that provides meals, showers, clothing, and more. I've received permission from Andre House to film and set out to document the real stories of those who live on the streets. In the middle of record-breaking July heat, and with the zone's cleanup ongoing around us, I talked to five different individuals. Tracy, Rosemary, Shamaya, Cowboy, and Mike. These are their stories. What's your name? Rosemary Scott. Richard Meach. Samaya Sanders. Tracy McConaughey. Michael Meza. And how long have you been out here? Well, this time I've been out here about three weeks. And have you been homeless in the past or? Yes, I was here from 2015 to 2017. About a few years. I've been out here for maybe like a month or two. 15 years. I've been on the streets in Arizona since uh, I've been back since the end of uh, Christmas and I've been gone since probably like last year so I was like 2023. What caused you to end up on the street? The first time I ended up losing my second husband and I had taken time off work to take care of him so it left me penniless and no way to pay rent so I was evicted eventually and this is where it left me. For work, what did you do? Uh, I'm a cashier. I've, I've done a little bit of everything. I can I drove truck for a while, I cashier, I was a nurse's aide, uh, I've done housekeeping in the nursing home, you know, just a little bit of everything, waited table. Well, me and my wife, we had an apartment at the beach or Breaking your brain up sky high. So that's like you couldn't even my wife gets social security and I'm crying for social security. Yeah. You bring your brain up. It's like you gotta be out here. And what was that a thing with the pandemic? Like why did the rent go so high? That part I don't know. What year is that in? Two years ago. Wow, two years ago. And before that, when you lived in the apartment what did you used to do? What job did you have? Groundkeeping. Groundkeeping? Groundkeeping, construction. Because I'd come down here and volunteer my time. Mm. Help out and everything. That's wonderful, oh, yeah. Shoot. I went from doing pretty good work in here and there to I got shot in mistaken identity and landed in Circle of the City. Had an apartment through them. Then I broke my leg on a humbug, so. I fell off again, went to a family member's out of town, came back home, and now I'm back on the street starting over again. Because this, this is this is home, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Arizona has a lot of opportunity and a lot of help for people. When you were working before this, what did you do? And what kind of job did you have, all of that? I had multiple jobs, like AAA cab, medical transport. Actually, I got a job through them. Cause they was taking me to a lot of my doctor's appointments 
And I work at Upper Crust Bakery, few temp service jobs, you know, jobs, miscellaneous jobs here and there that would help me pay my bills and stuff and help me put clothes on my back and stuff. What do you think was that pivotal moment that caused everything to change? You're going up, have all these jobs, and then suddenly, what happens? I was doing pretty good until my leg got broke. I got metal behind my knee. So that's what caused me to take this last little great fall. But eventually, you know, what goes down, it'll come back up. And I'm working right now to, at a temp service job just so I can save money and get back in another apartment. And when your leg broke, was that like falling off in a, what kind of accident was it? Man, step down the wrong step and everything, my knee, everything underneath my knee shifted to the left. Everything from my knee on up stayed in, in the correct place, so that kind of took me out the game for a minute. Uh, I used to do nursing. Uh, I lost my husband and uh, came home and it became to the point where it was a lifestyle. I couldn't get back up on my feet. I became addicted to drugs. Uh, after he after he passed, my whole life went sideways. You know, uh, I'm struggling right now to get back up on my feet. I left home in Vermont when I was about 16 years old. I ran away for the first time, and I, I've always been on the streets, I meaning running around parks, um, buses, trains. Any kind of transportation in the streets, I'll be running there. And I was able to like pretty much be alone in my body, alone in my feet, alone in my head, alone in my whole entire flesh. And I've always been I've always been born. I used to be a baby a long, long time ago. And like those so the streets and all that was like a very, very place I wanted to know about. Me being in the house, all I wanted to do was go outside and walk around. I would watch movies and saw people on the streets. I always wanted to go out and keep doing things. While I'm walking to the bar, walking to the movie theater, I wanted to walk in by self, my own clothes, and go out and do my own thing. Because I'm, I'm alive, I'm doing things. I was on the streets, running around, smoking weed, shooting at places like in San Diego, in Claremont, California pretty much. Most of California, I've probably seen them, but not all of it. Um, I've been shooting in Colorado, down in Denver, down my style street clinic, up there by Jesus Saves, around, walking around over there on, on the streets, like everywhere. Every street, every sidewalk, everything. The, there's a landmark, I would go there and I would smoke weed and smoke weed. That's what I could do. I find the smokers, stuff like that, beans, wear our clothes, you know. I mean, I would do that there. We go there and smoke and chill and stuff, and like a proper, like, meeting with, you know, or I could do yeah. myself, music playing. And now that you live on the streets, do you have employment now, or like any kind of job, or do you feel as though there's some kind of blockade to you getting a job where that comes? A, yeah, not having a home, a place to shower, rest decent, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got an animal with me this time, so uh, if I had a place to keep him, I would have a job by now, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. long time ago probably, but. Uh, it's just so hard to get him into the shelter, losing everything, you know. So I've got to get proof of the ownership and cop records, stuff like that, so I can get him registered, so I can get him into a shelter, so I can start working the process. Is life more difficult with a pet in, in many ways? In some ways, you know, not being able to get into the shelters and get into certain places like buses and stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, having him not being able to work, you know. But he's also a support animal, I'm also a support animal, so it helps me with my, calms me down, you know, it takes away a lot of anxiety and stress. That's wonderful, yeah. Yes, you know, um, yes, it's hard getting it because you got to have an address, okay, and if you put down the shelter, you can say, okay, we'll call you. Yeah. You sit there and start I applied for uh, Ally Universal for Central Thomas. So I got to pass my background check. I got a couple of misdemeanor and stuff, cut and stuff, and bad stuff, but nothing physical, nothing like that. And I got out all trying to drop because it was probably cause, but it still was illegal. Yeah. Do you feel like it's more difficult to get a job when living on the streets or? No. It's easy to get a job when you live in the streets, you live in your mom's house, you live anywhere, as long as you're living. 
as long as your bones, as long as your heart is beating, your bones moving, and you can breathe and move, and as long as you can like function in your body, as long as you can hear, understand what I'm saying, and you know where I'm coming from, and no matter what, you have opinions of anything, as long as you have some kind of that, you can go get a job. Oh, you, you can pick what job you want because you have the opinion of what you like. If you, have, if you can pick and choose your friends, you can pick and choose what you like, you can pick and choose the job. It will be you like that. If you know who's making the words or what's going on, if you know yourself enough to know that I don't need to watch this video at all because I know what's going on. But we're talking about the streets and what, what we can do or not, you know? And who's we? Me and whoever else been on this uh, channel. I'm at, at Cash right now. So yes. they help me with like bidding, showers and stuff. But the temp service job, housekeeping, it pays pretty good. See, Arizona is a state that pays pretty good on almost everything you do. Like, if you go to other states, they they still paying like ten and eleven dollars an hour. Here is like still it's like sixteen, fifteen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I'm recently out of prison. Uh, I've been out for a year and five months. I'm trying to get back up on my feet. I was in electric school. I, they, I had almost had my GED and my first, I got my first certificate. Actually, I had my GED in my first half of electric school. I was going for the second half, and then I could have started working for an electric company anywhere. So I'm trying to get back into that. Once I get back in the apartment, I still got to pay a few student loans. You know, it, it ain't that much though. You know? would, you, would you say to get that GED, you have to come off the streets, or can you do both at the same time? Or is something blocking you from doing that? It, shoot, I, I would rather get off the streets and jump back in my apartment and then start all the way over from, from ground up. You know what I'm saying? Because they still exactly. got, they still. I, I, when I first came home, I went straight to the to the college. It's on baseline. That's no, that's that's southern. It's on southern. And I'm still in the computer. So after I pay my my little fine, the little student fine, I can start back over again. Cause I did get my GED and I got my first half of electric class. So I'm not out here just wasting my time because time is precious. And yes, listen kids, listen to mommy and daddy, finish high school at least, at least finish high school, try college. But if not college, go to a trade school. It's cheaper than college. I'm 41, I'm here, I'm here to tell you. Man, you, you, it's hard out there. It's not as easy as they make you think it is. It's easy, but it's not that easy. Listen to your parents. When they gone, you ain't got nobody. And be careful who you find out there because you know everybody is trying to monopolize off of somebody. But if you can help somebody, they should be able to help you back. What does daily life look like for you? Oh, it's hard to get up in the morning. No one I got to face out here in the heat, you know, 115, 123, uh, by 10, 11 o'clock, you know, I mean, yeah. so it's hard to get to work and be decently cleaned and, and yeah. hygiene, you know, I mean, no, they wake you up every morning oh, at 5 o'clock and put you out if mm. you heat immediately, so. What do you do to survive in that awful heat? Um, well, for one, normally when I was alone in 2015, I would jump on the bus by six o'clock and start putting applications in or go to the library, start making resumes, just trying to make something productive out of the day, you know. My daily schedule, I wake up like at maybe like four in the morning, maybe five. Four in the morning. Four or five. Wow. I'm out to, to get up and get out, you know what I'm saying? After I brush my teeth and wash my face and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I gotta go to Chandler, so you know that's a nice little trip going back that way. And shoot, after work, I come. I either I either like stay on the train and look at the city and everything, but I, I budget my money. You gotta save your money. That's 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 the key thing. Have a bank account and save everything you possibly can. Spend as least as possible. Sometimes they don't sleep. You know. Uh, rest because you're in fear of what people might do. Now, some go out and hustle to get the little money to get their little kiss. You know, uh, some get a check and spend their money, they whole check on on girls, you know, uh, and still can't manage the person. So sad, you know, that 
addiction has been put in this form of life. Where there's very little self respect, you know, uh, no respect to keep place and no respect for others or for themselves. But I'm here as well. You know, I just, I push to want better. You know, I take a day at a time. What are the cats? I go to the bathroom, I do my business, my number one, number two, whichever one comes first, whichever my my, my body, uh, my, my human body has been blessed with the day, feels and stuff. Like that. Yeah, man, we do all the time, you know, time excellent, you know, Mike's world, Wayne's world, whatever it is, all good though, you know. And after that, I make sure I have my clothes on, make sure I look good, make sure, you know, I be feeling good. For my sure, music, yeah. I have my music, or I need to try my phone, I show my phone, which I keep, I gotta do with my hands, I'm being all good and stuff, and then I go for, I, I walk. If I walk, I get straight. There's some people that think that homelessness is a choice. It's what some people want. And we know that for you, that's not the case. No, for and, a lot of us, it's not the mm -hmm. case. But once you get stuck here, you drop into a depression and you just keep dropping lower and lower self esteem and confidence and everything. And it's hard to climb back up when you get mm -hmm. so low. Because right? there's so many things against you. It, it right. makes it impossible. One thing that's really hard is for anybody to get a bus pass to get anywhere. You know, if it, if it was easier to get bus passes to get places, you know, then maybe there wouldn't be so many of us out here. You no, know? no. Nah, nah. you, you do have some people that like stay in bed all day and don't even try and go look for a job. They don't take, they don't utilize the utensils that, that they try and help them. You know what I'm saying? Cause you yeah. gotta, you gotta put yourself in the, in the motion first before anybody else can help you. They can only help you so much. So with what they give you, you utilize that and you start going forward with it. Cause to just sit down and just accept, you know what I'm saying? Defeat ain't, that you, you, you defeating yourself. So exactly. Yeah. I see people on the streets, I don't judge them because I'm on the streets, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been on the streets more than once. But I'm 41 years old. I done had I done had multiple surgeries. And I got still got metal behind my knee and in my leg, you know. But I got a knee brace for when it's time to go to work. Uh, I still walk around even though it's climate changed, and you know it's, yeah. it's, it's extra hot. It's so hot outside. It's, it's, it's yeah. extra hot out here nowadays, and I still try. You know, I try and stay out the sun, but I still try and stay moving because. Mm -hmm. You know, help is all you got. Look, my people are homeless. If you want to be homeless, that's on you. Get in the break, look at every day, please tell you, move. Okay. You trespass. Move, you get trespass. Okay. I would be in the, I would be, I mean, my family in the house. Yeah. But we don't have to worry about that problem. We can just take off, go mm -hmm. to movies, whatever. Yeah. Go, go shopping, come home, just out here, you like, when am I going to eat? There's nothing like that out here. No. Yeah. It's awful, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't see his homelessness. I'm just living life. Living life? Yes. We'll I'm call it that then, yeah. People, I don't, my go-to is not, I'm homeless. My go-to is, I'm getting, I'm, 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 I'm moving here, I'm living here, I'm living life, I'm living here, I'm living here, I'm living here, I'm kind of super spam, so I wear my own clothes, I have my own face, I have my own head nod, I have my own nose. I've been doing this every day, you know? Yeah. In this body and stuff. And like, no matter what, I just know that I am I, and I am not going to be anybody else but me every day. So where I'm going with the knee bones all the way. So even if I'm out on the street, like I'm paying a cast, staying on a bunk bed. But I still go out, walk around the streets, I still come back, and it, it, it don't change. The only thing that changes, I'm getting a little older, and my beard is getting more bigger, it's coming more, a little more soft. My hair is not coming back no more than used to. I'm going to do it to more seen. You can kind of see I'm aging a little more. So it's kind of like, you know what I mean? But it's all good though, you know? Would you say that addiction is what got people into this place? Well, at least a decent portion of people. Yes. yes. Some form of an addiction, whether it be prescriptions, whatever, uh, street drugs, alcohol, it's still an addiction. You know, sex is an addiction as well. You know, some subtle substance people they need just to numb themselves. 
Stay out of the nonsense, and even people that is wrapped in nonsense, if they see you ain't about nonsense, they'll they'll keep you out that nonsense because it is a lot of nonsense out here in these streets. What people, drugs are out there? Like weed, blues. Man, yeah. like, you said it right, blues. Weed ain't no drug. That's legal now. You know, yeah. we smoke that like that's like this smoking a cigarette, like blues and G. You know, the usual stuff that mess with people, train the thought, send their ass down the wrong road. That's sickening, but it's sad to see, but it, hey, it's see, epidemic. Are, yeah, and they do, try and they do try and help people get off this stuff here, too. If you don't mind me asking, have you ever been on that harder, those harder drugs? Never. 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 I'm, 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 not, I'm not one of them. So where do you want me here? I can do it. But you've seen lots of people doing it. Yes. Would you say like that's a majority, minority? Or? It's still a minority, but it it appear like it's a majority, but it's still a minority. You, you can tell the type of people that's on this stuff. They didn't had a hard life, mostly young people. You know what I'm saying? You got some older people on it. And that's and it's a sad it's a sad road because the stuff stinks. From the people you know and what you've seen. Is that those addictions, those troubles, are they, do you think, what caused these people to get to this place? Or more is it a way to cope with the effects of living on the streets? I'm gonna say both. Both? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna agree with and say both because it probably has taken people out their comfort zone. And when people out their comfort zone, you know, they lean toward stimulants to take them away from the physical pain that they surrounded by. So. You know, I, the, the next thing to take away the pain is to catch a high, to take you away from the physical until you come down and still got to deal with it again. And that's sad to say. I can't do it, man. I just couldn't. That's new to me. It's the blues. Back in my time, it was G for real. And that was ruining people's lives and stuff. And you even had people in high school on it back yeah. in the day. You could tell more who was on it back in the day because they used to have craters in their face. But this this era in time, they more on blues and they be like heroin nodding off and stuff. And But you can smell it. You would know what zone it is because you can smell the stench of it when they be burning it. Is it like also in casts and in buildings or is it just on the streets? It's or is more, it everywhere? It's like, mostly it's mostly on the streets and everywhere. The stuff is disgusting. But it, I mean, that's what's moving in the streets right now. It ain't like coming up when we had X pills and Molly and acid. It's stuff like it's stuff like young and old people really is on this shit. And it's disgusting because it, it, you be like, damn, it, like they try and take help people get off of it so they can get a clean start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you can get if you can get a clean start, and you can have a Clear thought of mind, you can, you can progress in life. But while you steady with aluminum foil and stuff, you ain't got a clear mind, you know? Prescription drugs. That's their medicine. Percocet, whatever it is. You know? so, there's drugs all over. What is it? Percocets, blues, or? Blues, crack, weed, cheese, spice, Percocet. Mollies, whatever, you know, they're everywhere. It's not gonna stop. People want to get high and to numb the pain instead of looking down deep inside them and see what the cause of the pain. Instead of saying, you know What I do deserve better, I don't deserve this side, I don't deserve this, and I don't deserve that. But we don't take the time to encourage ourselves, you know. 
people probably sit over there and outside that gate or inside that other gate and just look down, you know. Oh, well, she's a drug user, he's a drug user, he's a drug seller, she's a drug seller. Stereotyping. Putting labels on people. Stop with the labels and ask what it is I can do to make you get better instead of labeling you. You know, the labels hurt just as work as an addiction. You know, there's nothing more worse than being labeled in any. Is it dangerous? Oh, yes. Yes, the cops and the ambulances here, oh, ten times a day probably. Especially the ambulance for heat strokes, people falling out, you know. Beyond the heat, what would you say the dangers are? of living in the streets? Uh, just each other, the people, you know, I mean, because of the depression and the anger with the heat, it just escalates everything, you know, so Are there other problems with violence, crime, or substances, oh, or? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people have mental problems and, and need medication, you know, and they're, they're unstable, so they don't know how to do productive daily life, the daily routine. So, you know, and, and when you're not in the right mind with the heat and the depression and everything, you know. Yes. Because anywhere you go around here, they they get out on the green on the end of the car, it's a zone. They just get you out. Yeah. People charge you money to stay on the street. Wow. Okay. You know, if you don't pay the, the money, the fee, you get you get beat up, jump. My wife had a wheelchair stolen. Oh my god. She had she got hit by a car. She's in a wheelchair now. Okay. First for check. That's horrible. That's like most most couples don't go down here to the court John for bathroom. Their old man gotta be sitting outside waiting for them to their protection. But they both go back in. Cause for me, I won't let my wife come out. Go back by herself. Okay. And I will tell what what you have out here. Because half the time at night time you got idiots out there standing by the J John waiting for an innocent beat up now. My heartbeat. But both our heartbeats are dangerous to my heartbeat. Because both our life is so real, constructive, anyone can see anything, anything, anytime, anything can happen. I'm straight for the key. Something can happen to me. The world can fall out to the bomb and I could just happen to be one there. It goes off, but I never know it. It's when I'm born. I'm like, it's all freaking bad, you know? It's like, whatever's going on, just the breathing in the air. Someone can put toxins in the air, I can't see it. And I might be going crazy, bashing my head. Why can't I control myself? Oh my God, thankfully, I have self control. But like, so much can happen. And every day, I'm just walking straight, but at the same time, my mind is buzzing. There are people that upset me. Everyone got people that upset me, with hands down. There are enemies. And like, you know, make, the people make fun of my face, I'm ugly and this and that, they don't like the way that I can do this to myself or audience my like, how, why, why you, why do you even think, you know, who the fuck you think you are, you know what I mean? And that's me, I was born this way. But like, they just want, they expect to see a man, they expect to meet disease. And they expect to do that all the time in my life. Just talk about something to draw, move around, like, how the hell? Um, can't even hardly go nowhere to get out of the heat. Yeah. Just Especially like, now, it's so horrible, yeah. Yeah. It's like, ridiculous. Because you can't go downtown, because everything's all no trespass. But from here, it's like, you get to um, find, find a way to get out, out of the heat. Yeah. And what the city should do is open some abandoned buildings, okay? Say, hey, you be out of heat, get you an empty building here. You can go in there and chill out, relax. You got coolers going in, okay? At least they don't work up past now. So there's so many buildings out there, and the city's not letting you in them, even when it's so hot? Yeah. Because I, myself, I've been to the hospital six times. Oh, my God. Each time I went, they kept me in to the dehydration, wow. kidney failure. Now I got that lung collapse. 
ketchup is like, it's hard. Living on the streets, if you ain't got nobody, we can a spouse, a boyfriend, or whatever. Watch yourself. Yo. Know? Because people will do anything to go, even if it's to kill, and take your money or your addiction. Or give it for little as respect, you know. Because if you don't respect me, I'm going to kill you. You know? Setting people on fire, putting them in the trash can, you think it's okay. That's not okay. But uh, I'm a believer in God, and the scriptures are coming true. Evil will kill off. Evil will kill off. Uh, evil will kill off the wicked. You know. And, and, and if you look, it's everywhere. It's just not here in Phoenix. It's everywhere. You know, cops are killing people. You know, people are killing people. But I think, I think right now, there's not enough love. There's not enough compassion from people that have things that other people don't have. You know, a simple hello, you know, or a hug, or something with an encouraging word that would edify somebody. Might just make a change in somebody. You know, saying, you know what, I believe that you deserve better. I believe you can do better. But it's not out of here. It's not out of here. You know, compassion for others. They think, oh well, she's got an addiction, he's got an addiction. She's got something under the rug. Maybe it's something more than that. Maybe the drugs is the only way to go out. Because they don't want to. With life being so difficult, what do you do to cope with that? How do you deal with the stresses and pain of being out on the streets? I just bear with you. I just grin it and everything just struggles. It takes a lot out of me and everything, but I just try to and then there's bitch of heat and stuff. Yeah. Well, me, I go to counseling and, and it's uh, wonderful. get mental health through CBI and different places, you know. So, uh, but some people don't have that inner strength, you know. And I'm just getting here. So, say, you know, two or three years from now, if I'm not here that long, who knows? I might be one of those people talking to themselves, too, you know. You don't know what, what you hold in store for you, you know. That's why I'm still alive pretty much, because I am me, and they are them. And I have to keep on being me, and then I'll be open with them. And if there was a competition, I wasn't thinking about it. Or if there was hope, I was thinking about it. Or if there was hope, I was just walking with my day. And I think about, is it to keep? Because the truth is, I've been here every single second of every single day since 1998. And the voice, I barely use it anymore. No one very, very, very important. And I used to talk to one person and just have my own life, you know? And I still do have my own life, but it become more of just not talking to one person, it became just a social life. It means that it was like, when people want to talk and hang out, I don't really talk about that much, it's kind of like, how you're doing? How's your day going? What's going on, you know what I mean? Or like, you know, we're going to hang out, get some cigarettes together and smoke together, you know what I mean? Or like, you know, you remember Aaron, you know what I mean? Those are like, I'm a, I'm a person, you know, I can say that because I, I know I know I keep it real with the English. Is there anything else I should know about you, life on the streets, something that you want to tell the audience? Um, donations. We live by donations. Well, you know, even if it's just the volunteers, you know, that come in for a few hours to serve dinner, or uh, donations of ice during the summertime. You know, anything to help us keep poor. Definitely. Frozen otter pop. Anything to help. You know. Yeah. Oh, also, everything you see, 100% real. Been alive for 24 years, 
almost 25 years I've been around. Don't ever forget. Don't ever forget that you are real. You are bones and flesh. There is no way anyone else can do you and do you. And no matter what, God forgives and people forget too. And if somebody forgave you for something very, very bad you done, and then she walked away, maybe there was something really going on. And then, what you saw, you have to see another bad day. But don't forget, you all go old. You all used to be babies. You all used to be young. Even the babies used to be babies, and it's the babies that get older than babies, because babies are always getting old. You trust me. You have to trust that everyone here is real. And you can trust yourself, you can trust me. Because you trust you, you can trust in me. Because you are me and I am you. You are you and I am me. There ain't no way around it. It goes full circle. And love, sometimes you can't pick love. So love God pick you. That's the way for that. It's a... Press most of all the need. The place where you can be. Kick back and relax. It's like a throw here, you got that old paint job. No, you get it for nothing. Open the door. Yeah. Let it go on the street. Go in and relax. And put a strict rule. There'll be drugs here. There'll be violence here. You're not lucky here. It's for what that want to relax. Get away from all the violence and drug that shit. Share. Talk to an individual because you never know what they're going through. You just might be that one to pick that person up. Share. Same. You know, human kind. What's lacking there in the world? <laughs> and it's sad. You know, take the time, find out. We're all not bad, you know, because we got a label on us. Doesn't mean we look bad. Just because he has a job, doesn't mean he's better than me because he has a job. Just because you volunteered, don't mean you know better than me. You got something I got, but in a heart. I might not have your genitals. You might not have mine, but we're still good people. Life on the streets is, is not pretty, it's not easy, right? Because a lot of people, they content with it because they don't want to take them steps forward to get off the streets because what they probably been through, they probably got a plex to be like, I, like, nah, man. Soak up your pride and come on back to reality and then get back to reality, you know what I'm saying? Because living on the streets, that's not reality. That's a harsh reality that shouldn't nobody have to endure, but you got some people, man, they so messed up, they don't want, they don't want no help. I'm just letting y'all know that stuff is it, it, man. Listen, stay with a clean mind and keep your nose clean. I'm for real. You see how I look? I'm 41 years old. I done been down there, up and down like a roller coaster. I'm still like up and down like a roller coaster. But I ain't going completely down. So if you ain't going completely down, ain't no other choice but to try and go up, right? I ain't gonna, gonna mislead none of y'all. <laughs> for real.